While the Hall of Fame encompassed all sports, interest in the stories of the Negro League's greats was the genesis of the project. The Negro Leagues had a rich history in Detroit, as you've already heard. Please join me in welcoming to the stage Gary Gillette, a published baseball historian and president of the Friends of Hamtramck Stadium to explore that rich history. Thank you, it's an honor to be here. I have a lot of ground to cover. I was given a modest assignment of telling you about the history of the Negro Leagues. It covers almost a century from, uh, hang on, I'm gonna set a stopwatch because they told me they'd shoot me if I uh, go over. So, uh, okay. The Negro Leagues covers the history of black, well, black baseball in the Negro Leagues covers the history from the 1860s to the 1950s, and it's black baseball because it was segregated, or white people were trying to segregate baseball. Uh, of course, African American players have been a key part of the history of baseball since integration, uh, but that's not what we mean when we say black baseball. The history of black baseball starts in the 1860s in Philadelphia, when a man named Octavius Caddo helped found the Philadelphia Pythians, which is what we would probably call today a semi-pro club, but Really, they were amateurs, and they were the first black baseball club in the United States. They also played with white clubs, but when they applied to join an association of baseball teams in the state of Pennsylvania, they were denied. The color line was drawn in 1871, the first color line. Uh, the state of Michigan has many connections to black baseball, including Moses Fleetwood Walker, who long believed to be the first African American to play Major League Baseball. It turns out about 15 years ago, we found out there was a black player from Brown College or, uh, in Providence who played one game, and no one knew that he had played before Moses Fleetwood Walker. Moses Walker and his brother Welday Walker played with Toledo in 1884. That was in, then in the American Association, which was a major league at that time. Both Walker brothers had also played college baseball at the University of Michigan. Bud Fowler, who was the first black professional player in the 19th century, played in Lansing for a while. Bud probably played in 24 different places or for 24 different teams, so he didn't have a strong connection to Lansing, but he did play in Lansing. And his biggest connection with the state of Michigan is that he, with, along with Grant Home Run Johnson, founded the famed Page Fence Giants of Adrian in 1895. They were a club that for a year to two years were almost invincible, touring the country, playing very few home games in Adrian, but a few, touring the country and beating the pants off all challengers, mostly white. Um, the Negro League started really in 1920 when the first organized major professional Negro League was founded by uh, Rube Foster in Chicago. And the Detroit Stars, who had begun the previous year in 1919 in Detroit, were one of the charter members of the Negro National League. The Detroit Stars played at Mack Park on the east side of Detroit from 1920 to 1929. Mack Park is at the, just south of the intersection of Fairview and Mack, just north of Southeastern High School. Uh, that's where it was. Um, and they played there until 1929. In 19, July 1929, there was devastating fire that burned down the primary grandstand at Mack Park and injured depending on which reports you believe, 100 to 200 fans, most of them African American. The owner of the Detroit Stars uh, did not offer any compensation and didn't even appear to be sympathetic to the injured fans. Fortunately, no one was killed, uh, which caused a lot of resentment in the African American community. And so the next year, the Stars moved to Hamtramck. A lot of people think that move is inexplicable because they remember the tensions and the uh, acrimony between the African American and the Polish American communities in Detroit in the 20th century. But in fact, in 1930, um, African Americans and Polish Americans got along probably better than any other white ethnic group got along with the black community. And so it was a logical thing to move there. They were closer to Black Bottom and um, Paradise Valley. Uh, Hamtramck was a good place to be located along the Baker Street line. The ballpark was one block from the Baker Street line, which carried many African-American workers to the Rouge plant and elsewhere to their jobs. Uh, the Stars played in Hamtramck in 30 and 31. In 1930, 
They lost the championship game, Game 7, of the Negro National League to the St. Louis Stars, despite the heroics of one Norman Turkey Stearns, who was their star hitter. Norman Stearns came to Detroit in 1923 to play with the Detroit Stars and became one of the greatest Negro League players ever and one of the greatest baseball players of all time. He was an outfielder who, except for the fact that he batted left-handed, you might think he was like Willie Mays. He could hit with power, and he won multiple Negro League home run titles. He hit for high average. He was fast. He ran the bases well. He stole bases. He had great range in the outfield. And he, had, he was um, well-respected amongst all the black players. He never got in trouble, never drank, never caroused. And that was unusual for all ball players at the time. Bar Ball players before World War II were a hard drinking crew, both black and white. Uh, so Turkey Stearns played in Detroit. He is the greatest black ball player to play baseball in Detroit, and that includes the Detroit Tigers and their great players like Willie Horton and Lou Whitaker. And uh, in 1931, the Detroit Stars folded a uh, casualty of the Great Depression along with the Negro National League. So in 1932, Two, you had a new team in, in Hamtramck. It was called the Detroit Wolves. That team had five future Hall of Famers on its roster, including Cool Papa Bell, who we've heard about tonight, and also Smokey Joe Williams, who was one of the greatest Negro League pitchers. Some people said that Smokey Joe Williams was uh, as good a pitcher as Satchel Paige, if one can imagine that. And uh, the, start, the Wolves lasted less than one season, and the Detroit had a new Detroit Stars team in 1933, which folded after one year, a new team in 1937, which folded after one year, and after that, Detroit never had another major Negro League club, although there was a thriving semi-pro uh, black baseball scene in Detroit. The Negro Leagues uh, saw their heyday in the 1940s, mostly on the East Coast because of the wartime economy, which improved the economic conditions of African-American communities, but the reintegration of baseball with Jackie Robinson, the well-known story in the late 40s, caused a collapse of the Negro Leagues. Because once there were black players playing in the major leagues, African-American fans went to see them. And they abandoned essentially watching Negro League games. So the Negro Leagues collapsed because of the success of black ball players in Major League Baseball. And I've asked them to put this photograph up here of Turkey Stearns. This is, uh, because when I look at this photograph, which I think is the single greatest photograph associated with the Negro Leagues, and trust me, there are very, very many great photographs, what I see is the story of black baseball in Turkey Stern's eyes. This was 1979 at Tiger Stadium. Turkey Stearns was not long for this world at this point. I can't tell you what he's thinking, but I can tell you what I see. I see in his eyes the story of the Negro Leagues and black baseball, and I see that story as a triumph of determination over discrimination and the triumph of dignity overcoming despair. If you'd like more information about the Negro Leagues in Detroit, you can check out our website at hamtramicstadium.org. There's a lot more information there. There's also a way to contact me if you have any questions. I'd be glad to answer them via email. Okay? Thanks very much.